So in November, Google Finance is getting rid of their portfolios feature. And a lot of people don't know that you can pretty much create these three views here using Google Sheets and the Google Finance function that's in it. So that's what I'm going to show you today. If you never use Google Sheets, it's pretty much just like Excel. A lot of the same mechanics here. To write a function, you just press equals. And then to use the Google Finance function, you type it in, Google Finance. Uh, you press tab. And it gives you uh, some hints here on how to use it. You can put the ticker symbol, get some attributes. Anything in brackets is optional. If you click this arrow, it will give you some more uh, descriptions on how to use this particular function and it gives you an example uh, I'll give you one as well so say I want to use Hasbro um, like I said these are optional so if I uh, just close out the function I'll get a price if I go to uh, Google type in Hasbro you'd see that the price is the same to figure out what other attributes to use, you can just go to um, the Google Help documents for it, and it gives you a list of all the attributes you can use um, to get some data. Just be mindful of what the attribute is for. So these attributes are for historical data. That means you can pull uh, kind of like an array of data where you get a date and whatever this attribute is. And then these attributes are specific to mutual funds. So you might be scrolling down here and see something like this, income dividend. Um, this won't work for a stock that has a dividend. Uh, this is only specific to mutual funds. So for example, if I put this in for Hasbro and put the attribute as income dividend, uh, I'll get an A even though Hasbro has a dividend. That's because it's stock. So you saw I was hard coding everything. I could actually put in, say, has and then price here and just reference those in Google Finance function and close it out and still get the same result. And then I could change this to any other, any other attribute and no change dynamically or even just change the the uh the stock to get the different price or whatever attribute i'm looking for another feature there if you look inside the function again you see some date ranges so you can add some dates in here and the interesting about that thing about that is what i was saying before where it gives you kind of like a range or an array of things so here I'm just going to put um, just some dates, Let's say 12, 20, and you can see here, you saw the dates that I put in to the 12th, I guess the 12th was our holiday or something, but <clears throat> you can see that instead of returning back one value, it returns back two columns, one of the date, and then one of the close. You can make these dynamic as well. You could do something like today, which is a today function, very similar to the one that's used in Google or in Excel. You could use like subtract 30 days from that and then just use today again. And you get, you know, a little more dynamic. What you can also do with this is you can nest it. So Google has a function called Sparkline that basically creates a chart in a cell. So you can, you know, you, the Sparkline feature uh, has some uh, attributes to it. You can check it out here. It will open up a, a help option for you. You can see all the attributes you can add to change, uh, change the chart type and things like that. So but the main point is that you can nest it in the data into an aggregate function that Google has. And the Sparkling function is specific to Google Sheets. Um, the equivalent in Excel is the Sparkline option. You have to insert the Sparkline, but 
this one just makes it a little more dynamic and it gives you a function that you can change the attributes to. So that's pretty much it on how to use it. Um, in order to recreate the portfolios option, so this portfolio, each of these tabs, uh, I have them listed out here. So I have the Google Finance fields, the tabs they belong to, and then the attributes for the Google Finance function you can use in order to get the information. Same thing with fundamentals and the performance. You can see performance, <clears throat> it has mostly some inputs and some calculated fields. These calculated fields are things that you you use with the inputs and then you perform some mechanic on it using the information you get from Google Finance function. So <clears throat> for example, here is, an, is basically the fundamentals tab just recreated. Uh, so you can see all these uh, columns that you have here, like 52 week high. Each one of these I've recreated with the Google Finance function. So this is the attribute, this is some input, and then you can see here the Google Finance function is just you know, referencing the stock name and then whatever the attribute is at the top. The stock names, uh, you can see I'm using a unique function here. This is, I think, specific to Google where you type in the word unique and it gives you pretty much, if we just look at the help here, it gives you just like a unique range of data. So you can see if I click on Amazon, you get the word Amazon, but here has the function. If I get rid of it, it just gets rid of everything that was listed there. Uh, stock is a named range. That's very similar to what's in Excel. So if I go to data, go to named ranges, you can see that I've set two here. This is the one that I was talking about with stocks. So whatever this, this, this refers to this range, which is just a, and then unique gets the unique uh, um, values in that range, the named range. I have another one uh, in the fundamentals. Uh, well, I'll show you the overview. So overview is pretty much the same. So if I go to overview tab here, you can see there's a lot of information is just coming from uh, using the Google finance function. So again, you get the name and everything like that. And then uh, the calculated pieces. So the calculated pieces, you can see that I use a VLOOKUP on performance. So I'm just looking up the um, symbol against this performance tab. So this is basically where that calculated uh, day's gain is. And you can see here, I'm just getting some of the same information. The user inputs I get from this summary trans sheet. So this summary trans sheet uses a, another Google specific uh, function called query. So I have a whole set of transactions and then the query function allows you to put in some SQL statements. I think it, this is SQL like specific to Google. It's like see, Google's query language. Um, what I'm finding out is that it's mostly like just aggregate stuff. You can't do like anything really complicated with it. So you're, you're just able to select and do stuff like that. So that's where this is from. If we go back to performance, and that's where I get these uh, inputs here. I'm just looking up the, the value and then take the absolute of it. Uh, cost basis. This is kind of hard to calculate um, the way Google does it. It does, I think, first in, first out. Uh, so you have to get a little creative with it. Uh, I'm just having it as an input, but I'm marking it as calculated since you can calculate it essentially from the transactions that you have. Um, just being a little more creative. And then the market value calculations, gain, uh, these are all just reference other cells here that just calculate uh, if you have the information. Then the gain, uh, day's gain here, you can see that I'm just using the Google Finance function times uh, the number of shares. And then overall return, okay, this one looks a little complicated, but it's actually pretty simple to do, uh, the way Google calculates it at least. So Google, they have a, a link in the description below um, to how they calculate some of this, some of the uh, equations they have in Google Finance. But here, it's just looking at the market value, and then this summary trans four and three are here. Again, this is just the, the summary of um, the transaction sheet. 
So cash out is the stuff that you buy. Cash in is the stuff that you sell. And the way Google calculates it, it's just historical. So if you have bought anything, it sums it up. If you sold anything, it sums it up. And then for the performance to calculate overall return, it takes the market value plus everything you sold minus um, everything you bought divided by everything you bought. And that's how you get your overall return. So these are the two that I've heard that people actually want to get in their portfolio. So if, if you just look at this, the majority from the performance from the fundamentals, you can get strictly from using the Google Finance functions overview. You can get pretty much everything from the Google Finance function. Uh, just need a reference the day's gain. And then even that you can get from the Google Finance function, just multiplying it by the number of shares and overall return. It's pretty simple too. If you just have your transactions, then you could just use the query function uh, in Google to just sum up your transactions. And then the only hard part is this cost basis. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have more questions or if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, write some comments or questions in the stuff below. And yeah, let me know. Thanks.